Five days after NASA's first attempt to fly the massive space launch system rocket ended with technical problems, America's space agency on Saturday sought to launch a rocket largely cobbled together from the space shuttle, which itself was designed and built more than four decades ago again. Unfortunately, Artemis 1 has taken another hit. The rocket was once again derailed by now familiar issues with a leak in the propellant leads feeding into the core stage LS. The showstopper was an 8 inch diameter line carrying liquid hydrogen into the rocket. It sprang a persistent leak at the inlet known as a quick disconnect leading on board the vehicle. Valiantly, the launch team at Kennedy Space Center tried three different times to stanch the leak, all to no avail. Finally, at 11.17 a.m. ET, hours behind on their timeline to fuel the rocket, launch director Charlie Blackwell Thompson called a halt. For now, according to the latest update shared by William Harwood, NASA has ruled out any additional attempts to launch the SLS rocket Monday or Tuesday, the last day in the current lunar launch period. Instead, the rocket will be rolled back to the vehicle assembly building, likely delaying the flight to October. It's not clear when rollback might occur, but now two options are under study. Replacing components in the leaking quick disconnect fitting at the pad and then carrying out a retest with liquid hydrogen, or rolling back to the VAB and doing the repair work there. Engineers expect to make a decision on how to proceed next week. However, regardless of the outcome, a trip back to the VAB will be required before launch to service self-destruct batteries that are not certified past Tuesday. After all this, the moon rocket first conceived in 2010 and initially scheduled to have its first test flight in 2017 is now scheduled to take off no earlier than October, and possibly much later. NASA, for its part, is hoping Americans will overlook a decade of expensive failure and pray for the best. However, they shouldn't. The SLS's path to the launch pad should never have happened in the first place, because NASA's Artemis rocket, put simply, is a gigantic, colossal waste of money. Some proponents argue that the SLS launch marks the beginning of a renaissance for the US space program. It's the first mission of NASA's Artemis program designed to land Americans on the moon mid-decade and eventually lead to a permanent lunar base. All of that will require a working and successful SLS, and this mission, Artemis 1, would stress test its capabilities and send Orion, a vehicle that will eventually hold astronauts on a trip around the moon. It sounds groundbreaking, but the reality is that the private sector of the space industry have been pushing boundaries for more than a decade, while the SLS lingered through delays and blown budgets. The last humans to visit the moon's surface arrived via the Apollo 17 mission in 1972. Congress canceled an additional three missions due to cost, safety, and waning public and policy maker interest. Instead, NASA pursued the Space Shuttle, the International Space Station, and a rich robotic exploration program of the Earth and beyond. Then, in the 2000s, the George W. Bush administration chose to invest in Constellation, a hugely expensive program designed to lead to a permanent human presence on the moon. But costs quickly spiraled out of control and NASA and its congressional patrons seemed incapable and uninterested in controlling them. For example, as a cost-saving measure, Constellation's crew launch rocket, the Ares-1, would draw heavily from existing, proven space shuttle systems and components, including the solid rocket boosters. But the cost saving never emerged. In 2009, NASA estimated it would cost 24.5 billion US dollars to develop Ares 1. Meanwhile, in California, a scrappy startup called SpaceX was completing development of its workhorse Falcon 9 rocket and Crew Dragon spacecraft. NASA invested $396 million in those new craft, both of which now fly missions for the space agency. In 2010, President Barack Obama canceled the Constellation Lunar Program, arguing, we've been there before. 
The plan was to visit an asteroid, then proceed to Mars. Congress wasn't on board with canceling the jobs that the Constellation supported, so it added a provision to NASA's 2010 authorization requiring the agency to extend and modify existing contracts for Constellation and the Space Shuttle into contracts to build the SLS and the Orion crew vehicle that's riding atop it today. The goal was to maintain a workforce totaling in the thousands along with their skills and capabilities. But early on, NASA made it clear that the SLS would only fly every two to four years years, calling into question whether engineers could really be kept sharp and the missions safe with such a low frequency of launch. In the 2000s, the space shuttle was launching three times per year, and as many as seven times in the 1990s. By contrast, the SLS, if it's successful on its first mission, won't fly again until 2024, when it launches Artemis II. SpaceX is setting up craft almost weekly in 2022. Rocket Lab USA Incorporated has already launched six times this year. So then who's really keeping US aerospace skills sharp while advancing aerospace engineering? Employees weren't the SLS's only links to NASA's past. Rather than develop a new engine for the massive new rocket, SLS's engineers adopted and adapted the RS-25 engine that powered the space shuttle. The first four launches used modified surplus shuttle engines that NASA had placed in storage. Future launches will use new RS-25s manufactured by Aerojet Rocketdyne at the cost of roughly three and a half billion US dollars for 24 single-use engines, or some 145 million per engine at a time when reusable rockets and engines are the trend across the private space sector. The promised cost savings have yet to appear. NASA's own auditors recently estimated that a single launch of the rocket will cost 4.1 billion US dollars eight times greater than what the agency estimated in 2013. Meanwhile, overall costs are tipping 23 billion. That's a far cry from what NASA promised Congress and Congress promised the American people when the program was conceived. If we can't do a rocket for $11.5 billion, we ought to close up shop, said then-Senator Bill Nelson of Florida in 2010 when he was a major sponsor of the program. These days, he serves as NASA's administrator. It's possible to do better. For example, the fully reusable engines that power SpaceX's Falcon 9 cost around a million US dollars. In 2019, SpaceX's chairman and CEO, Elon Musk, tweeted that he hopes that the company's Raptor engine, which will power its in-development Starship rocket, will eventually run at 250 thousand US dollars. Even if it's wildly optimistic, as Musk tends to be, it's worth noting that the RS-25's redevelopers have never promised cost reductions that approach those discounts, nor has Congress provided incentives for them to do it. In fact, the successes of the private space industry appear to have caused Congress to dig in its heels on the SLS. Every year between 2012 and between 2012 to 2022, it appropriated more money for SLS than NASA requested, in spite of the blown deadlines and budgets. Congress appears to have learned nothing from the backward-looking failure that the SLS represents and will continue to throw money at it for years to come. This week's scrubbed launches are the latest reminders of that ongoing, shameful legacy. How do you feel about it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Other than that, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Until next time, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.